Good afternoon guys and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a further or a continued theme of what's in the bag. So today we're talking wedges, we're talking what I've got in the bottom end of my bag and you will see in there I am currently using the SM9 Vokey wedges. In those I've got the S400 shaft which I will talk a little bit about afterwards but First one I've got up here is the 56 degree, which I have got with 10 degrees of bounce and the S grind on there, which gives me a little bit of versatility. So when you think about wedges, obviously for me, I play quite a lot of Parkland golf. I don't play too much links, but I do play a little bit of links. So I needed bounce really that I can use on all types of golf. I'm not playing the same golf course all the time. If you do play the same golf course all the time, it might be a little bit easier for you to choose what kind of bounce you want. So 10 degrees of bounce is right in the middle. You could get obviously down to four degrees of bounce, which would be very good for your Lynx golf. You can then also get up to 14 degrees of bounce, which is gonna give you a bigger sole. That's more for your longer grass. That's for your parkland courses, where we've got a little bit more grass underneath the golf ball. So for this shot, I can open this club up. So with the grind, it's provided me with different shots that I can play. I can play it low. I can launch one that runs in, has a little bit of check. I can also then open that up and play it pretty high. And a lot of people comment saying, why haven't I got a 58 or 60? Again, we should be able to put enough loft on this club to get the ball going up into the air. So I should be able to open that up again with the right setup, with the ball position a little bit forwards in the stance, hands a little bit lower, open the club up wide. I should be able to play that nice and high from this lie quite tight on here just shorter probably an apron cut on here you can see there even with 10 degrees of bounce i'm still be able to pick that up play a high trajectory there just as high as hitting a 60 degree but obviously with it being a 56 i don't have to make as much motion a lot of people get a 60 because they think it's easier we have to make a longer swing we have to be a lot more precise and i've seen more times than not People will thin the 60 degree a lot more, they will drop kick the 60 a lot more, they don't know what bounce to get, and it becomes a club that they're not sure where to use it from. And they're also not sure where to use it from if they're further back. Do I hit a full shot from 60 yards with it? Or can I get good contact, or is that gonna to too high? Will I get any spin? They're not sure. Also here with the 56, again, if I change my setup now and get a little bit closer, ball position back in the stance, I can get this 56 launching a little bit lower, running down to that flag, a little bit of grip on the second bounce, those who have gone to the same distance away from that flag. So it's a club around the greens that I can use for different shots if I wanted to maybe, as we always sometimes do, if I've got a little bit of rough to go over or I'm behind a sprinkler head, I need that little bit of loft, I can get that up and running and onto the green, but I can also hit the flock shot that we're not going to use very often but having the right bounce, having the right grind, something that's versatile is essential around the edge of the green. And you can see we can do that all with a 56. So we don't necessarily need a 58, a 60, or someone did comment yesterday that they've got a 64. They hit it nice and high because it's fun. If it works, fantastic. But for consistency wise, it might not be repeatable all the time. Let's have a look at the next club that I've got in there. So what is the gap? What do I go from from 56? I then go down to this club that we'll look at now. Next club up is the 52 degree, eight degrees of bounce, F grind. And this is a club that I use around the edge of the greens. This is something a little bit less bounce. I do find myself using this a little bit more potentially on your Lynx golf. So I do play it around there. I've got a little less bounce. So I'm gonna guarantee the contact a little bit more than I am with a 56. And it's what I would use for a bumper and run. If I'm off the edge of the green, I can control this now, I can get it nice and tall. So I've got a little bit of a, a hump or a ridge to go over here, but I can get that just over and releasing without much effort. You see, we still get plenty of loft on there. We get that ball releasing and I can control or I can expect how that's going to come out much more consistently than if I get a 56, it might land a little bit soft into that slope and it won't release as much. You might say, well, I would use my pitching wedge for that. That all depends on your setup. So if you're somebody like myself, who's got stronger lofted irons, the ball might come off the face a little bit too hot, very hard to judge. And what I see then from people is they have a nice backswing, but then they're not sure, they get a little bit slow into the ball and they leave it short. 
So it's something you've got to think about. Depending on what loft your pitching wedge is, we need to think about that. Again, this is a club that I use from around about 120 yards. I don't hit full shots. I could probably get this to around about 130, but it's not a club, again, with the wedges. I'm not trying to hit any full shots. I'm trying to play three quarter one controlled flights, a little bit lower, and that's what brings us into talking about the shaft, like I mentioned earlier. So the S400 is a little bit heavier than your normal standard dynamic gold shaft. Reason for that is Tiger was the main, well, he was the first person to do this. He found if he gets heavier shaft in his wedges, he doesn't have to make as much of a longer swing. There's more weight, there's more speed in the club head, and it gets it launching that a little bit lower as well. So he was the first person who had this in. Not everybody agrees with this shaft. So obviously when you go for that fitting, you might have graphite shafts and you might have lighter shafts because that might feel better. You might have more control of the club head. You might have a standard shaft that matches your iron set. You want to make sure that you get your gapping correct. So having the same shaft as in your irons might for you give you better gapping. So that might mean your, your sand wedge goes 100, your 52 goes 120, your pitching wedge, depending on the loft, goes 140, or vice versa. However far that you hit it, whereas if you get different shafts, you might get a little bit more or too much out of your 52, which makes it too close to your pitching wedge, and then you get out of there and you're quite confused, oh, which one should I use? Should I use my pitching wedge? Or I've been finding today that my uh, 52's been going as far. Well, I'll hit that, try and hit a little bit harder, comes up shorter, obviously brings a lot of issues in there. So when you go for fittings, think about that shaft. Do you want to match it to your set? I also like the feel, and I'm going to try and do some videos when I next speak to Titleist about graphite shafts in wedges, how they help, how they give you a total different feel. I certainly like that in the lower clubs, like a 56, I feel like I've got a little bit more control with the club head. So that might be something that you add into your 58 or 60, where you're only really using it around the green, and you might get a little bit more control. But a club that we can use, whether it's a short-sided one, or even a little bit longer now, I can get that launch in, I can see how it's going to run out, and it's a club that I use, like I say, a little bit more off titleized, it's got a little bit less bounce, I feel like I can get a better contact, and I can get a little bit more control. So the final club that I've got, you'll see there, is the 48 degrees with a 10 bounce and the F grind. So 48, that was put into my bag, I've never had one of these wedges, I've just realised it does need a clean to say the least. But that's because of the set I've got. My pitching wedge is 44 degrees, so quite strong. Older lofts would have it closer to 48. So I needed a gap there. I couldn't go from my, obviously from my 56 to the 52, and then have a gap of eight. Ideally, the maximum I'd like to see in your bags when you are picking wedges is a 60 de six degree gap even. So obviously if you've got a 44, you could get a 50 degree and then you could get a 56. So you could then just have the two extra wedges in your bag, or you could go like myself, 48, 52 and 56. It gives me that little bit more versatility around the greens and pitching in that I can play a few different clubs. And this is a club I use a lot from even around about 80 yards. It launches a lot lower. So if I've got a back pin, the greens are very long here at Waterfront. So I might be able to pitch it halfway up the green, one bounce, has a little bit of check and then releases out. And that would be the old fashioned pitching wedge where people say, well, I wouldn't hit it from 80 yards, I'd, I'd only drop down to the 52. Again, it's thinking about what kind of flight you can produce. These shafts certainly do help me with that, although I might look at changing depending on the uh, results from testing them with graphite shafts. But you've got to think about what your setup is. A 48 might give you a little bit more, but make sure with your gappings, you don't go too big. So you're not gonna go from your 44 degree pitching wedge all the way up to a 52 and then to a 60 degree. There's gonna to be too much of a gap in there. We're gonna to have to do too much manipulating with your half shots, your pitch shots. So think about that. Max you want to do is six. So you could always go obviously to a 50 degree from a 44 degree pitching wedge and then a 56. That will be a good setup. That might actually give you a little bit more room at the top of the golf bag where you might think about putting in a hybrid as well as a seven wood or you might put another wood in there depending. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that. That is the wedge setup I have got. So when you're thinking wedges, please do go and get fitted. Don't go more than a six degree gap in between those. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed that and I'll see you again later in the week.